Okay, uh, the last bit of membranes, uh, implication for cells. Basically, it, this is all about what's called the surface area to volume ratio. So what does that mean? Well, you find that surface area, as you study biology, surface area is immensely important. Surface area, just as membranes, are immensely important. Now, why they're important is because things move in and out of organs, out of cells, across membranes. So, for example, in your digestive system, your digestive system has these little structures, these little fingers called villi, all lining the inside of your small intestine, where you absorb nutrients. If your small intestine, the insides were smooth, there would be less surface area to absorb nutrients than if you have these, that's why you have these villi, because each one of these, all of this, all the way around here, is surface area where there's membrane that uh, nutrients can be absorbed across. So your, your, your small intestine wouldn't be as efficient if you didn't have those villi, if you didn't have that increased surface area. So what is surface area to volume ratio? Well, just surface area to volume ratio is how much surface area there is and how much volume, the ratio of how much volume there is on the inside. And this is what limits the size of cells is this surface area to volume ratio. What you have to imagine is the volume is, represents the interior of the cell. That is where metabolism is happening. That is where stuff is going on. Substrates are coming in, enzymes are doing their thing, converting substrates to product. All of that stuff is happening inside that volume. The more volume you have, the more metabolism is going on. The greater the volume, the more room there is Inside, that means there's more enzymes, more stuff, more going on. So as volume increases, metabolism increases. The problem is that you are inside a cell. That metabolism is happening inside a cell. So you have to move things across the membrane. So you have to move the, the substrate of metabolism across the membrane. And the products and the wastes have to leave across the membrane. So as the volume increases and metabolism increases, the demand on the membrane increases because more stuff has to come in and more stuff has to go out. Now what happens to the surface area to volume ratio is that as a cell gets bigger, the ratio of surface area to volume decreases. So let me show you, and we're gonna do it with a, um, going to do it. It's in, there's a nice picture in your workbook too. But, uh, so if we have a cube, a small cube, there we go. Okay, we've got a small cube and we're pretending that this cell is a small cube and the cube gets bigger. Okay, uh, see the size I'm gonna do, uh, is two and it gets bigger, it doubles. The size doubles of this, uh, this cube. So what's going to happen is the small cube, its surface area is two by two, so uh, four, um, eight, 12, 16, uh, and then the back side, so the surface area ends up being 24, okay? 24. So they basically 24 square units of things being able to enter and exit. The volume of this cube is going to be eight. Now, the equation, what happens is the equation for volume is a cube. It's always a cube. It'll be like the sides cubed. Uh, the equation for surface area is a square. So as you go bigger, volume increases much faster than surface area. So watch, uh, the, the surface area for our cube where the sides have doubled is 96 and the volume is 64. So what's happened is this, the surface area to volume ratio here is three to one. And here the surface area to volume ratio is 1.5. So you have a lot less surface area on the large cube servicing a much larger volume, a lot more metabolism. 
So things can't move in. Not enough stuff can move in to be processed and not enough wastes can come out. So this is what limits the size of cells because if a cell grows too big, there's just not enough surface area to bring in the materials for metabolism. The other problem is things have to get from the membrane to the interior. They have to diffuse or move to the interior. So for example, like if there's DNA, there's proteins being made in the center, they have to make it all the way out. The bigger the cell is, the farther they have to diffuse. That's basically the implication for cells of surface area to volume. Uh, and there's some, uh, what else do they ask here? Uh, they're saying the review questions uh, for this unit. They talk about, um, so how does changing surface area to volume affect metabolism? Well, if volume increases, there you get more metabolism, but at a certain point, you can't get more metabolism because there's not enough surface area to move the wastes out and to have the products like the sugars, let's say you're, you're just, you, let's say this cell, all it did was turn sugar into CO2 and water. Well, if at some point, it just not enough, there'd be all the transport proteins would be used up by all of that, that could move in enough sugar to service that volume if the cell got too big. So metabolism would level off, would stop. Uh, and how does plasma, plasma lysis affect surface area to volume ratio? Well, it, what happens is in plasma lysis, remember, water leaves the cell so the cell actually shrinks so your surface area stays the same but the volume will actually go down um but metabolism will slow in plasma because there's now there's not enough water there's not enough still you could still you get cell death because less interior volume less metabolism until there's not enough metabolism uh and uh, why do changing surface area to volume cell, uh, or so endocytosis so it, well there's just a balance between endocytosis and exocytosis that's why so cells that are constantly bringing stuff in or exocytosing stuff out they because they're bringing stuff in and they're endocytosing and exocytosing their cell membrane will stay out if there's not enough cell membrane also remember uh your cells can just make more cell membrane okay that's it that, and that's it for membranes.